<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here, uh, I, I guess we're going to be doing something, a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of kind of a love letter to this, so to speak, because right here we have the PSP. Now, this system, as you can see, is fully working. There's really nothing wrong with it, aside from it not really being in the best shape, and I can assure you that is not my fault. I had bought this pre-owned years and years ago from a thrift store. It was in this kind of grimy, scratched up, scuffed up. I don't even know what happened here. Weird, I guess, condition already. But we are going to be taking a look and building something here in 2021, which in all honesty is probably one of my favorite developments or devices in uh, just homebrew modding in general and even, you know, console preservation here. And uh, let's show real quick. PSP goes over on the side for now and uh, bam. Well, wait, I should actually flip it over. Here we go. A uh, battery, a regular old PSP battery uh, with a piece of paper, some tape on it that says Jig Kick in uh, probably 14 or 15 year old Mr. Mario's handwriting. Yeah, this here doesn't seem like all too much, but this is a Jig Kick battery, a modified service mode battery, a tool, or uh, as it's, I guess, more commonly known, a Pandora's battery or Pandora battery for here, the PSP. Now, if you're not too sure of what this is or what this does, this thing is awesome. In short, without getting into it super technical here, you end up changing the EEPROM on the battery itself, so it boots up the PSP into a service mode. You put the battery in the PSP, it automatically turns on, and it is looking for some special files which are on a memory stick which you have to set up yourself. And once you do that, well, at that point, you kind of have full control over the PSP. Of course, this does work for modding, but even more importantly, it actually works for restoring, preserving, and really just unbricking and repairing a bricked PSP. Yes, even a PSP that is completely fully bricked. I can go into this PSP, wipe the flash off of it completely, and if I have a magic memory stick paired up with one of these Pandora's batteries, guess what? I'm able to restore the PSP completely to a working state. And I can even mod it with custom firmware along the way, which makes it that much better. This was such a cool development at the time it came out, because really, I mean, you just needed these two things, and you could use your own, or you could, I, I guess, get some spare ones, which is what I did. Again, you just need a magic memory stick that you need to set up with some files and such, and you need a battery. Now, there was a couple ways of setting up the battery. One of them involved actually cracking open the battery itself and making a physical modification to it, which I have not done, and we are not going to be a doing here in this video. I'm just going to do it all software wise. And as for the memory stick itself, uh, it did require for a while to actually have a PSP with custom firmware kicking around for that, uh, but there are some nice tools and applications in which you can do this pretty easily. Now, probably about a year ago, I actually had to revisit making a magic memory stick, and I found it a little bit more cumbersome to kind of find all the details and software and everything, which is why I wanted to make this video as well too, to kind of give it, I guess, an extra push here in 2021, at least the year I'm making this video, and I'm sure it will still be good for a few more years, because the tools I'm using are not new by any means. I'm just gonna drop that, but it's fine. It's just a clone battery. Either way, what we are going to be doing is we're going to walk through the entire process. Here, you will need a custom firmware PSP, and first of all, which PSP will you need? Well, of course, as I said, custom firmware. Now, I have shown several videos on how to install custom firmware on your PSP, and my video showing how to install custom firmware with Infinity 2.0 should work just fine. But now it actually comes to the PSP itself. I should stop tapping that. For the PSP itself, you are going to need, I would recommend for this, getting a 1000 model PSP. The reason why is because every single 1000 model will be able to create a Pandora's battery with no issue. There, just, <laughs> it's going to sleep on me. Now you can create a Pandora's battery with the very early 2000 model PSPs, but that's going to be about it. Really, if you want to guarantee a PSP that has been modified with custom firmware can create a Pandora's battery, you're going to have to get a hold of a 1000, one of the original fat model PSPs. Now this also brings up another conundrum here for actually using your Pandora's battery and magic memory stick. Guess what? You can use it on every single PSP one. 1000. So that means if you have a PSP like this, a, an original 1000 model, you'll be able to recover it using this method. 
just fine. That's great. For the 2000, you'll be able to recover, uh, I would say, a good amount or even most of them. However, for the later model 2000s, you cannot use the Magic Memory Stick and Pandora's battery on them, which is extremely unfortunate. That same problem I just described here also goes into the PSP 3000. The PSP 3000 cannot use the Pandora's battery or Magic Memory Stick at all, unfortunately. This should also go without saying, but I guess I'm going to put it up on here. Uh, the PSP Street, you can't do it because, I mean, like, look at it. You can't, you can't put the battery in there. You can't do it. So, uh, the PSP Street here is out of the question. And as well as the PSP Go, because as cool as the PSP Go is, I mean, you're... You... See, it... It doesn't work. So if you're going to be following along with this at all, or you just want to store the knowledge into your memory banks inside of your head, the best thing to do is going to be use a PSP 1000 to create the Magic Memory Stick and Pandora's battery, or I guess the Magic Memory Stick we're still going to be doing on a PC. But either way, the Pandora's battery, if you're doing it software-wise, I would recommend use a PSP 1000 model. And for actually recovering a semi-bricked or full-bricked PSP using this method, this works on every 1000 and most of the 2000 models, but anything like that that is higher, so a newer, like, kind of final run 2000 model, a 3000, a street, or a go, this method will not work, unfortunately. Now, there is a new development, like, here in 2021, called Baryon Sweeper, I believe that's how you say it, uh, and Baryon Sweeper essentially is able to emulate a Pandora's battery, so to speak, so you're able to use it on the later model 2000 PSPs, as well as 3000 for the first time ever, which is really cool. Unfortunately, this video is really not going to be going into that, and I'm not sure if I'll ever make a full video covering that directly. However, this is going to be for the original Pandora's Battery, Jig Kick, and Magic Memory Stick combination to recover both of these, the 1000 and most of the 2000s. I also keep talking about the battery here, and I have a bunch of batteries that I can show you, of course, but uh, as for the recommendation for an actual battery that you should use, as you can see, uh, a lot of these are the same, and some of them are a little bit different here, but the one that you should be using that I'm going to recommend is going to be a fat, original, like, OEM Sony battery. A fat battery for the PSP 1000. And if you're saying, oh, well, that's way too big for the 2000, guess what? I mean, it still works. Like, see, this, this is a slim battery here, and as you can see, it is quite literally slim. However, the good news is, if you ever need to use this in a slim console, look at this. You just pop it in the back, it still plugs in, and look at that. It's working because the console turned on all by itself. And just to show you I'm not fooling, just watch. Plug it in comes on by itself, that means that it is a Pandora's battery or a Jig Kick, whichever you want to call it. The only downside to this is that it's so chonky and fat and big right there that you cannot use the battery cover, which is fine. You're not going to be playing with this battery. You should be using it as a recovery tool. So you only need it for about five, maybe 10 minutes at a time. And once you're done, you can pull out the battery and go back to your slim battery. I also do mention this as well too, because I know that these ones, the original fat batteries and even the specific model number on here. It's the PSP 110 battery. These fat ones, the 1200 or 1800 milliamp hour batteries should work just fine for reprogramming and actually using. Now I have heard some mixed reports. Some people say you can, some people say you can't of a slim battery, but overall I'm just going to recommend getting an original Sony branded fat battery. Reason being is that this is known to work on here and it's going to work on the PSP 1000 and 2000 with no issues. Issue, so why don't you just get one of these original ones? Now, even as a little bonus, check this out. This is actually in my own personal PSP that I grew up using and I upgraded to. I bought one of these upgraded batteries, the 2200 milliamp hour ones. It's an original fat one that has been internally upgraded, so you get some more juice out of it. This model specifically is the PSP 280, and from what I've seen, these ones work as well too, so again, really just the fat batteries are going to work for you just fine. Now, earlier I was also showing off of this battery right here, which this one is not Sony branded, it is third party, and this is just a kind of cheap clone battery. I doubt this is even legitimate here, the 24 hour milliamp hours. And it says here, look, PSP 110, so it should be the same model, but unfortunately, these clone batteries do not work. The reason being is that we need an EEPROM on the original battery, and we need to reprogram that EEPROM, and these ones simply do not have that EEPROM. 
Just think of this, we need a smart battery, this one is a dumb battery. This one works for our games, but it's not going to work for what we're actually doing, which we're actually going to reprogram the battery here. I I'm not kidding when I say that. So, uh, these ones, if you have a third party, no name, generic, clone one it's not going to work for this unfortunately you need that sony branded official battery and last note on the batteries here as well too i am going to be showing how to get this converted to a pandora's battery as well as reverting it back to a normal battery so it will work just fine However, I do have two here, as you can see, because this one I keep on hand. I converted it years ago, and I never converted it back because I like having this on hand. This has helped out so many times. I have on purpose messed around with or bricked my PSPs. I've been able to restore them. I've restored them for friends. I've just restored them for, you know, uh, modified and been able to fix up a lot of PSPs over the years with this thing. So I like having one of these on hand. So if that sounds appealing to you, I would recommend doing this with a secondary battery that you have on hand however if you only have one battery available i understand that so i will be showing the process of getting it converted to a pandora's battery and then reverting it back to a normal battery as for the storage i mean i got a lot of old psp stores like i got the 32 megabyte ones i got these two gig ones i got a few four gigs here and look i've even been surprised like these memory stick pro duo adapters that have a little micro sd card this is actually my current magic memory stick right here that has the files we need it's just a four gigabyte like i don't know cheap micro sd card right here and i was surprised that it works so these seem to work from what i see but your mileage may vary on this However, you might want to get, you know, one of these, like, actually properly branded uh, Memory Stick Pro Duo cards right here. Just don't get the 32 megabyte one. I'd recommend having something more, so get that out of the way. Really, anything 64 megabyte or higher, that should do just fine. But I think for this one, uh, we're going to go with the 2 gig, so... I have no idea who TM is, but I'm so sorry, TM. This is going to go to good purpose, I promise you. Oh, and this here is going to be important. I am absolutely going to recommend you format this. And if you want to be like me and you want to have one of these on hand, a actual like Pandora's battery on hand, I'd also recommend making sure you just keep another piece of storage on hand for your magic memory stick in case you ever need them. You got the magic memory stick on hand, you got the Pandora's battery, you just charge this thing up and you're ready to go on that with a system. They're either trying to you know nuke completely or repair or do whatever you want to on there so for this here i would recommend having a secondary piece of storage for this or if there's anything that you actually care about on this piece of storage uh, go ahead and back it up just make sure it's backed up somewhere safe because we're going to be reformatting this here oh and finally since we're actually accessing our storage we do need a method of accessing this on our pc so whether you want to use a memory stick pro duo to usb adapter or or if you want to use this thing right here, like one of these adapters with the micro SD card and get that plugged into your PC, or if you just want to actually plug it into your PSP and then connect through mini USB, that will work just fine as well too. Regardless, we do need to access our storage on the PC. So without further ado, let's finally actually set this all up here. Oh, oh, actually last, last thing, I promise you, uh, make sure you got power available. Get your charger ready. You're going to need it. All right, so over at the PC, there's going to be a few things that I would recommend downloading. The first thing we're going to be using is PSP tool or Rain's PSP tool right here, which you can just download the zip file. This is going to help us actually get our PSP's battery into that Pandora's battery state. The next thing is going to be PSP Grader, and this is going to easily build out the magic memory stick for us. I know there's several different tools and utilities out there, and I just noticed, at least from my recent usage, that PSP Grader seemed to work the best for me. You might also use Rain's Magic Memory Stick tool, I believe that's the name of it. However, this is just going to cover me using PSP Grader version 8. And the last thing you're going to need is you're going to need PSP firmware 5.00 specifically. I'm going to have a link to the awesome archive over at Midnight Channel. I'm not sure who runs this, but they do a really good job of keeping this all archived here. And you can simply look for PSP firmware 5.00 and download that. I would also recommend grabbing the MD5 hash so we can actually check it. After you download that firmware file right here, you can actually run it through a MD5 checker. I'm using online md5 and paste in the md5 right here and compare it and if it has been compared successfully then this is a properly downloaded and verified non-corrupted 
PSP update. So awesome, we have our three files. We have the PSP tool zip, we have the PSP grader zip, and we have the actual PSP firmware file. First, let's go ahead and start with PSP grader. You can just right click and extract this either here or into its own folder. I'll actually just do its own folder to make it a little cleaner. And here you're going to want to run this exe. So this of course does require Windows or just a method of running a exe file. At this point you should also plug in either your PSP storage or your PSP itself, which I have set as I right here on my PSP or my computer. So here just go ahead run PSP grader, click yes if it asks for admin permissions, and here here we go. If at any point you have any questions or you're wondering what to do, you can click on how to use PSP Grader, but this is pretty simple. First of all, it should detect that you have a PSP connected if you have hooked up your PSP to your computer, so this is all accurate. And I'd also recommend you tick format memory stick. That's just going to make it a lot cleaner. Now next up we also need to get the official Sony 5.00 eBoot update. So for this, you will need to click on Load Official Eboot, and you need to find the firmware download itself that you just grabbed. Once you have it all loaded up, these should frost out, that should be okay, and actually if you look in the PSP Grader folder, there's going to be a 500.pbp file that is now going to be sitting there. But either way, the last thing that you really need to do here is you can select your trigger button. Now this here means when you boot up the PSP with the Magic Memory Stick and the Pandora's battery all plugged in, there's going to be a button that you need to press in order to actually get to the menu that we need. So by default, it is left trigger. You can pick any of these others, or you could even have it set to none so it can automatically boot up into that. However, I'm going to just keep it default at left trigger. And from here, you can create Pandora Stick. Now keep in mind, yet again, that this is going to format your storage, so make sure that you are absolutely sure you want to do this on this piece of storage that you've backed up whatever you care about. So I'm going to now create Pandora Stick and let it do its thing. It looked like it froze for a bit, but I kind of just had to click PSP Greater again, and no, it's copying over everything that it needs to, so that's good. All right, so after a few minutes, we are done here. It should say make MMS is finished. You can close out of this here, close out of PSP Grader completely. And next up, we're going to need PSP Tool. For this, just the same thing. You can extract it into its own folder. So we should now have a PSP Tool 1.00 folder. From here, just grab the PSP folder. You can right click, copy this out, go over to your memory stick and right click, paste this into the root of your memory stick. If it all asks you to merge files or folders, you want to do that. So in the end, you should be able to go into PSP, Game, and PSP Tool should be sitting in there. So this is all done now. At this point, you can right click and eject your Magic Memory Stick, and hopefully it should be all set up. All right, so as you can see, we're now back over at the PSP. This should all be set up, and if you see right here, my PSP already has custom firmware running on it, which is what we need. So again, make sure you have a PSP 1000 model, make sure it already has custom firmware on it if you're doing the software method, and have your battery that you want to flash on hand in your PSP already. So we can go to Game, Memory Stick, and fire up PSP Tool. All right, so for PSP Tool, it is pretty simple. We can go down to Battery Options, go inside of here, and we're now going to first back up the Battery EEPROM just in case we need to. So you can back up your Battery EEPROM and wait a few moments. There we go, it has been saved to our EEPROM. I'm going to go back, and we can always restore that exact one. If you don't back up your EEPROM, that's fine as well too, you can convert it just fine, but it's, you know, kind of good practice to just do that anyways. Now from here, we can go over to Convert to Service Mode Battery. Press X, and as you can see, our battery serial has now changed. So press Circle, press Circle again, and we can now exit out of this. So now once this is available here, what we're going to do is actually test this. So I'm going to shut down the PSP itself. Now I'm going to pull out the memory stick here, the one that we've set up. Now you'll also need to do a battery pull here, so make sure you remove the actual battery. And now I'm going to try and show this to you all on screen. Just watch this, 
if you pop your battery in and your PSP turns on automatically, you all saw I didn't touch this here, congratulations, you now successfully have converted your battery to a service mode battery or a Pandora's battery. However, your PSP is not going to do anything because it's currently looking for some sensitive files on a memory stick. So we need to actually provide those to the PSP. So let's go ahead and do this again here. It's easier too if you're doing these battery pulls to just keep the battery cover off. That's what I'm going to do for the time being. But either way, what we can do is pop our memory stick in like so, and then pop in our battery and wait. Now there we go, as you can see the PSP is working completely normally. It's working in our exact same state as we had it before, it is still modded, however do keep in mind my PSP was working. So if your PSP was bricked it would not do any of this. And it's doing this because at this point here, we have now told the battery essentially, hey, go ahead and boot up whatever instructions are from the memory stick, and the memory stick is saying just boot up the PSP normally if you're not pressing anything. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to do that battery pull, and now we're going to hold down the left trigger. So just watch this, I'm going to hold down the left trigger, I inserted the battery, It's really thinking, isn't it? <laughs> Just look at that. Look at that. It's going. There we go. There we go. That's what we needed here. So at this point here, because I actually do want to continue on, I am going to cover up the battery so it doesn't pop out. And if you're going to be installing the firmware itself, I'd recommend you now plug in your PSP to power. Now, I'm not going to plug mine into power. I know some people have called me out for this before, but you know what? At this point, I now have two Pandora's batteries and I know how to make a magic memory stick. So if I brick this device, I can unbrick it super easily. But regardless, here we have a few awesome options. We can install 5.00 M33 custom firmware. We can also install a clean 5.00 official firmware. You can also look at the NAND options, so you can dump, restore, format your L flash, and take a look at some other tools here. Inside of hardware info, this just describes some information for your actual PSP itself, which is, you know, nice to see here. Inside of test M33, uh, this is actually pretty cool. So check this out, you can fire up test M33, and essentially think of booting your PC from an operating system loaded up from a USB device as opposed to an internal storage device. That's exactly what this is doing. This is going to allow us to use M33 custom firmware on the PSP itself without actually installing or flashing anything. This is all going to be from the memory stick. So you could even, I guess in like, you know normal 2020 modding terms here, think of this like MUNAND, so to speak. Everything I'm doing right here, everything I'm navigating on, and look at that. Look, you got Go Messenger right there, you got some other stuff, but uh, everything I'm doing here, this is all on the actual memory stick itself. This is not on the actual PSP's internal storage, like the flash itself. So we can even look at that M33 VSH menu. So cool, let's go ahead and shut this thing down. Wait for it to power down. And just like before, I am going to have to hold down the left trigger and turn it on. For anybody who's wondering why I don't have to do the battery pull, it's because I kept the battery the batteries still in there. I never pulled it and popped it back in. So either way, we just wait a bit. And I'll show you the actual recovery process here. So awesome. Now that we have this all up and running, this is what you would do. If you want to downgrade your system, even if you want to recover the system, let's say this PSP was completely bricked, it was a hard brick, and it was a software related issue, and there was no way to actually recover it through something such as like, uh, what is it, either recovery mode on a custom firmware, or even the recovery modes that Infinity has on there, like if you hold down the home button and boot up into Infinity itself without the custom firmware on hand. Uh, let's say again, I wiped the NAND on here completely. I could use the magic memory stick as well as the battery here 
to now recover this system to get it working in this state here and I could either install official firmware or I can install a custom firmware. So I'm just going to show you what I've done for many people before. There's been people who they either messed around with a firmware or they were updating and they lost power or something along those lines and then all of a sudden they just had this PSP that it would turn on and it would just stay at a black screen. So what I would do is I would use the battery, I'd use the magic memory stick, come to this menu and I'd hit install 5.00 M33. And at this point, as you can see right here, it's formatting our flashes. So it's going to do that flashing for us. And now we just wait a few minutes and it's now going to do all the magic here. And there we go, check it out. So now I'm going to press X to reboot the system completely. I'm not going to be touching any of the buttons here, so it should just boot up into the normal system itself. Oh, there we go. I'm going to have to change these settings real quick just to make it look a little less uh, painful. Okay, there we go. That is so much better to look at now. But as you can see, I can even go into, where was it off the top of my head? These system settings here. I'm going to go down to system information and check that out. 5.00 M33-4. We've successfully, well... Uh, recovered this system and now we have it running on custom firmware again this was a really cool process to do back whenever I would unbrick or repair a PSP that someone had messed up because it was again I just need my battery just need the magic memory stick I press well hold down a button to turn it on press another button to install and within five minutes they have their system that's been broken for three six nine months all of a sudden working in front of them so now awesome we have this all ready to go you might think you're all done you're ready to do whatever you want so you can turn off your PSP however you are going to notice something here so I'm just going to take out the magic memory stick I'm going to put it over on the side kind of there so you all can see it and now check this out let's say I want to use any other memory stick on my PSP I turn it on and it's bricked again I can't I can't do anything that's that that's just great isn't it that that's real great well there is a few ways to fix this up here first of all it's doing this because our battery has not changed our battery is still in service mode meaning that it's looking for a magic memory stick for the instructions that we need so if you don't want to change out your battery there's a few things that you can do here first of all what you could do which I know many people have done before, is if they still want to keep their battery, essentially you do a battery pull right here. You then take power and plug it into your PSP, turn on the PSP. Is, is, is it going to do it? Oh, I actually have to use a, uh, okay, I have to actually use a wall adapter. Real nice. All right, seriously, I have, to, I have to do this like the weirdest way. Okay, so just watch this, right? There's no battery in there. So essentially what you'd have to do is power up the PSP or plug it in without a battery. You would turn on the PSP. So at this point, you're booting it up without telling it to go into service mode or anything. And then from here, you plug your battery into the back of the PSP. As you can see, it's now charging. You then take your battery cover, you put it on, you unplug it, and there, then you're able to actually use the PSP. And this only works <laughs> until you shut it down. So, I mean, you can go into, like, standby mode just fine. Uh, you can turn on the system again from standby with no issue, but if you completely power it down, then you end up, lo or, oh wow, you know what, no, I think I spoke too soon on that, never mind. So, uh, as you can see, that's not really the best method right there, it, it really isn't. Now, this is actually one of the reasons why PSP Grader has the option to inject IPL only. Essentially, what this means is, let's say if you have another memory stick you're using, I was just using a 2 gig for this, but let's say my main one was a 64 gig, you could pop in that 64 gig, hit inject IPL only, and therefore you would then be able to use that memory stick with your Pandora's battery normally, so you always have the Pandora's battery on hand and literally usable, but you'll still be able to use whatever other memory stick you want to. So you just inject that IPL into all the other memory sticks you want to use. However, here, as you can see, this isn't really the best option. So now let's say I want to revert this completely. Again, I would recommend if you're interested in some hardware like this to, you know, have a second battery that you install this to, have a second memory stick that you install this to, but 
you know, I already have one of these right here. I've had it for a while and it's uh, it suited me quite well. This is over 10 years that it's been a jig kick, right? That's been a Pandora's battery. It's been over 10 years, which is so awesome. But let's go ahead and do this here. So I still have my battery plugged in. I'm going to put in my magic memory stick and let's go ahead, fire this thing up because now we're going to go through the reverting process. So I'm gonna show you how you can completely get rid of this if you ever so choose to. So from here, you would go in, you would go to your memory stick. And again, you have to do this on custom firmware, but you would open up PSP tool yet again. Now from here, you just go down to battery options. And if you ended up creating a backup EEPROM, you can actually restore that same EEPROM as long as you still have it on your memory stick. So I'm going to go and do that. So I'm just going to rewrite the EEPROM right here. Wait a few seconds. Oh, one write errors occurred. So you know what? I actually don't really trust that all too much. So for here, I'm actually going to just convert this to a normal battery, which is what you can normally do. I'm just going to hit X on this. Battery serial is that. It's now randomized, so at this point it should work as per usual. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to quit out of this game. And awesome. Hopefully our battery is working fine. So I'm going to turn off the console itself. And now we're going to test and make sure that our Pandora's battery is no longer Pandora's battery. So I'm going to, again, remove the 2 gig card. I'm going to turn on the system. Yo, wait, did I... <laughs> Did that just, uh, you know what, that, uh, hold on. Wow, uh, so that shouldn't be happening. Let's, uh, let's try this again here real quick. I'm just going to pop this in because I have not removed the functionality to have this be a magic memory stick. Let's just see what's going on. Okay, so that works. I think this thing is still a Pandora's battery. Let's see what's going on. Let's do this one more time. So ideally, I should be able to go back here, go into PSP tool. You know, honestly, the, the, the backup is nice to have, but maybe we don't have to worry about that here. We could do, I guess, restore battery serial, but that's fine. Let's just convert this to a normal battery. So that all seems to be okay. All right, check the battery serial. That, yep, that's fine. It's not all Fs, so that should be okay here. I'm going to just exit out of this again and turn off the system after this. You know what, just to do another test on here, I'm even going to do a complete battery pull. So let's just remove that, pop it back in. Well, it's not turning on, which is good, <laughs> but let's see what's happening here. There we go. All right. So uh, you know what? Maybe just disregard my advice for the actual EEPROM stuff. Uh, just do the conversions. <laughs> hey, restore option. You, I'm, I'm looking at you. You embarrass me in front of company. How, how dare you? All right. So now the last thing here, if you actually want to get rid of the uh, magic memory stick, you don't want it to be magical anymore. Uh, here's the thing. I, I guess good or bad, it's really up to you. We're just going over to system settings, going over to where is it? Format memory stick. Uh, that's not going to be enough because there's actually some more magic that's happening there when you set it all up. So we need to revert it on our PC. So for this, you can go ahead, either take the memory stick, plug it in, or or you can just plug in your USB drive or USB cable into the PSP and go back to PSP Grader one more time. When you open up PSP Grader one last time, make sure you have your storage connected, enable format memory stick, that's just what I'd recommend doing, and clean Pandora stick. So you can say yes to that and just let it do its thing. It's going to look like at one point here that it's not responding, just just ignore this, just let it keep going. You might have to click it again, but once it's all done, it should say Pandora removal completed. So you can close out of that, close out of PSP Grader, and from here, just again, right click and eject your USB drive. So here we go, we are at our PSP one last time. We have the memory stick in there, we have the battery, and as you can see, it is booting up just fine, no issues right here. So that's about it for this video here. Again, I, I just, you know, I kind of wanted to do tutorials thing but also just want to have some fun and talk about this because in my opinion this is one of the again one of the coolest things that I have seen in a homebrew scene and in my opinion one of the most important developments in the PSP scene yes there is custom firmware there is homebrew there is all that stuff but even if you're not a modder even if you don't want homebrew you don't want custom firmware I mean this tool is just so invaluable this combination here with the battery and the memory stick it's so invaluable because you're able to unbrick 
any PSP 1000 as well as mini PSP 2000s. You can literally use this as a repair and preservation tool. I use this for mini devices. I'm sure many other people use this for mini devices, maybe even their own devices when they were in a tight situation. And I mean, it's still bulletproof at this point, regardless of what firmware you're on. Again, if you have the hardware right here, this is unpatched on the one on the 1000 models. And for most of the 2000 models, it works. And hopefully with the new developments with Baron Sweeper or Baron Sweeper, uh, it's going to extend it out even further. From what I know, as I said, 3000 models that could not use the Pandora's battery can now utilize that for the first time. Not the same one that we built right here, but an emulated one, mind you. And that's going to extend out to other models as well, too. And hopefully, I'm sure with that project, by the end, the goal is going to be that you can use that in some way to unbrick every single PSP. Anyways, that is it for this video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing this here. I've been looking at the PSP again because honestly, I mean, this is this is probably my favorite handheld ever. I absolutely love this system and it did it did a lot. I learned a lot with the system. I really did. So it did a lot for me and the homebrew and modding and coding community behind this was just absolutely fantastic when it came down to it. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this. I loved going back in here and doing all this here. But that's about all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.